How do NES cartridges save games? Saving games on consoles in the 80s was a bit of a problem. Games came on ROM cartridges or read-only memory, where the game was literally etched into a memory chip that couldn't be rewritten. In the early days, this wasn't much of an issue, as games like Pac-Man and Space Invaders weren't really complex enough to call for saving. But as games got more sophisticated, developers wanted to add save game features. Nintendo's solution to this was the Famicom Disk System, a disk drive add-on for the original Japanese version of the NES, the Famicom. Games were sold on floppy disks, which of course can be easily rewritten with save data. You could even rewrite the whole disk and put a brand new game on it if you wanted to. Quite a few of the best known games on the NES were originally released on the Famicom Disk system, including Metroid, Kid Icarus, Konami's Castlevania, and of course, The Legend of Zelda, which all made use of the system's save abilities. The Famicom Disk System can't really be called a failure, more than 200 games came out for it, but it wasn't an unmitigated success either. Nintendo at one point imagined that disc games might completely take over from cartridge games, but that never happened. The system sold well, but not that well. It being a fairly expensive add-on, disc system games were easier to pirate, and both the systems and the discs were easier easier to damage and could be quite unreliable. All this meant that the system was destined never to leave Japan and never saw a Western release. But Nintendo still wanted to re-release some of the more popular disc games on cartridge for the Western market and for Japanese gamers who didn't have the disc system, thinking that they could be big hits. So what did they do? Well, in the case of Castlevania, the save feature would just cut out completely. And yes, on the original version, you could save. Metroid and Kid Icarus had the disc save replaced with a password system, a code you could note down on paper, then re-enter to carry on where you left off. A very, very lengthy code in the case of Metroid. But what about Zelda? There was no way they could dump saving entirely, and the game was way too complex to save with a password. It would have been huge, even bigger than Metroid's. Clearly, they needed some way of saving data on the cartridge that the game would come on. Today, flash memory would be the obvious choice. It's cheap, reliable, and will hold data pretty much forever without any power source. Back in the 80s though, whilst flash memory had been invented, it still wasn't ready for use in consumer products, so Nintendo had to choose something else. They instead went for battery backed up SRAM, or static RAM, a type of memory that can easily be rewritten. Now, static RAM is volatile. It will lose its contents if it doesn't have any power supplied to it. But the amount of power it needs to keep running is very, very low. So low, in fact, that a single button battery will keep it working for years or even decades. All the game data needed to save the game could be written to this memory and the battery would ensure that it stayed on there, if not forever, then at least for a pretty long time. It was cheap, fairly reliable and did exactly what they needed to do, providing enough rewritable long-term storage directly on the cartridge to save a player's progress. In fact, it worked so well that Nintendo used a very similar system on many of their other consoles, including the Super NES, Game Boy and N64. How long will the battery last? Well, it's hard to say. Some games save batteries are still working fine 30 years later, but others seem to die pretty quickly. NES games do seem to last longer than Game Boy games though, possibly because they use a larger battery. Interestingly, the SRAM on a cartridge often wasn't just used for saving, it could also be used to supplement the NES's very tiny 2 kilobytes of internal RAM. Not all the SRAM was necessarily used for saving and what was left over could be used as extra work RAM to store system data as the game was being played, allowing for more complex and technically demanding games. Some games that didn't have any kind of save feature at all still had an SRAM chip installed, like Bionic Commando here, just to use as extra working RAM. In fact, this is one of the many support chips that could be included in an NES cartridge to increase the system's capabilities. Well, that's it. That's how NES cartridges managed to save data. Thank you for watching, thank you for getting this far. And if you enjoyed this, then please subscribe for more of the same kind of stuff.